Welcome to Dive Addiction Nullarbor Expeditions. This video is designed to inform participants on what to expect when coming along on one of our Nullarbor Expeditions. Whether you are driving yourself to the Nullarbor with all your own diving and camping equipment or being chauffeured by us, where we supply all your food, water, camping equipment, tanks and weights, this video will show you what is expected of all participants throughout the trip. Everyone should have a reasonable level of fitness to cope with the tasks involved in the expedition. After watching this video, you'll be able to judge for yourself what level of fitness is needed on one of our trips. Keep in mind, all expeditions are very much a hands-on experience, which means everybody participates in all aspects of the adventure. There may be some tasks more suited to certain individuals, so tasks will be delegated accordingly. However, everybody will be expected to do their fair share of the work. Every task is important regardless of its ease or difficulty. Camaraderie is a very important part of the experience. So if you're walking to or from a dive and another person could use a hand to lighten their load, always ask if they need assistance. As a wise friend of mine said, don't walk empty handed. The adventure really starts when we meet on one of our Nullarbor cave systems. On arrival, the first priority is setting up a camp, which may include setting up a communal kitchen area, as well as a communal shower. Sorry, but there won't be enough water for everyone to shower each day. Water is a scarce commodity on the Nullarbor, so every drop counts. Conditions and permits allowing, there will also be a communal campfire, which can be used for cooking and keeping warm. Fuel for the fire may be scarce, so be mindful as it is a campfire and not a bonfire. Next is assembling the rigging and climbing equipment which may include items such as A-frames, flying foxes, ladders and safety ropes. When hauling in and out there will be no go or danger zones where no one will be allowed to stand in the unlikely event that a rope or sling gives way. No one will be allowed near a cliff edge without a secured safety harness as well. Safety briefs will be given before any hauling takes place. However, there is no substitute for common sense. Once all the rigging equipment is prepared, we can start sending gear down as far as the rigging equipment allows. From that point, gear will be manhandled to the water's edge. While the gear is being hauled on any rigging devices, two-way radios will be used. Remember to keep communications clear and concise as well as announcing who is speaking and to whom the message is intended. For example, Joseph to Steve, ready for the next drop, over. Steve to Joseph, go ahead, over. Also, when using ladders or ropes, first check there was no one on the ladder or rope. Second, call out on ladder or on rope. Then lastly, once off, call out off rope or off ladder. Most people are more than happy climbing the ladders. However, should you wish to be belayed, then buddy up with someone willing to do this. And remember when on the ladder, three points of contact at all time. There is no easy way of getting to the water, but there are ways to minimize the effort required. The rigging equipment decreases the physical effort required to transport the gear over the rocky terrain. Well, at least most of the way. Less personal physical effort makes for an easier and safer trip, minimizes the chance of injury, as well as minimizing any impact on the cave itself. Another task is preparing the air compressor and unraveling up to 250 meters of air fill line allowing us to fill the tanks at the water's edge. Again, a briefing will be held to explain how to perform these tasks and how to run the compressor. Cave etiquette must be observed at all times. Anything taken into a cave or a sinkhole must be taken out. Yes, that means carrying a good quality bag and biodegradable toilet paper should nature call at the wrong time. Once out of the cave, the contents will need to be buried and the plastic disposed of. And no, that does not mean in a fire. Caves should always be left in as good a condition as we find them. And if there is someone else's rubbish from a previous trip, do the right thing and take it out. 
Once everybody's gear is at the water's edge, then the diving can commence. A site brief will be given and a map of the cave shown to all. The sites are large enough to cater for multiple dive buddies or teams. Guided dives can be arranged. So as not to interfere with anyone else's dive plan, there will be nightly discussions on the next day's activities. There are no hard and fast rules, but rather a courtesy to other divers so we can all plan around each other's schedule. It is important that divers only dive to their own qualifications. Although there are no dive police on the Nullarbor, there is also limited access to help and insurances will not cover you if you go beyond your training. The cave will always be there, so just enjoy the diving to the qualification you currently have. When it comes time to filling cylinders, usually the last divers out of the water stay at the bottom and fill the cylinders. The second last group of divers connect four cylinders to the fill lines, but do not open the valves. They do check the line pressure, which should be around 240 bar from the previous day's filling. Once the last divers are out and ready to fill cylinders, all attached cylinders are opened and the pressure drops. This tells those topside that the compressor is ready to be started. How the cylinders are changed will be explained during the compressor briefing. Again, this is a task that is shared around with everybody. It is important that all divers completely remove all first stages from cylinders being filled, as those filling are not accountable for lost O-rings or damaged regulators. Diving followed by exercise is not recommended, so always do more time than required by your computer for safety stops and decompression stops. Rest after the dive, stay hydrated before and after the dive, and when exiting the cave, do so at a slow pace. The walk from the water's edge to the top of the ladder may be 250 plus meters. And be mindful that the water in the cave is at sea level and the top of the ladder is generally 90 meters above sea level. To give it some perspective, this is the equivalent to climbing to the top of a 30 story building. Pace yourselves. There is no need to keep up with anyone. It is not a race. Go at your own pace, whatever that pace may be. On haul out day, there may be a chance for a morning dive. This is not a problem as long as those diving are out of the water and ready to haul by the agreed time. And most importantly, are able to do so safely without the danger of decompression illness or fatigue. It is still a team effort while hauling out. Part of the haul out is collecting the air fill line, packing the compressor, disassembling the Flying Fox and A-frame and packing away all of the equipment. After everything is packed away, then we can start packing our own individual gear and of course packing up camp, which usually takes place the next day. The campsite is always thoroughly checked for cleanliness and that we do not leave any rubbish behind. So if you've driven, you are now free to depart on your journey home. And if you've been chauffeured, then it's time to chill on the drive to Perth. In closing, when planning for the Nullarbor, Always remember, this is an expedition. If you want it, bring it. If you think you need it, bring it. If you do not bring it, it will not be available. The closest general store may be seven hours away. Redundancy is king. Be prepared and have backups and backups of backups. We look forward to you joining us on a dive addiction Nullarbor expedition. <laughs>